Uh, welcome back baseball fans. We are going to be eliminating the Chicago Cubs with this video. Uh, they finished the year with a record of 14 to 19 in fourth place in the North. Uh, in an era where the Cincinnati Reds and the Pittsburgh Pirates would have ruled this division had it been this division. Of course, it was formed through realignment. Of course, the Cubs would have struggled against the Phillies and Pirates and Mets as well. But you know, the guy, the hitting didn't have the pitching as predictable. Uh, hit 271, area 484, won't get it done most times. Great to see Billy Williams having a great year with his final use of his 1970 card. 382 with 10 homer and 25 RBI. But we'll find out that he'll have another great year coming, so don't worry, Cub fans. Um, Beckert hit 304 with a 342 card. Uh, Hickman and uh, was a little under the average, along with Santa, a little lower on the average than we would have expected. Um, Randy Hundley didn't do much with his bat either. As far as the pitching went, you know, Fergie uh, did pitch 91 innings, got six complete games, 19 walks and 76 strikeouts, which is nice. A 113 whip, but he was the victim of some shaky defense at times and giving up home runs. So he had a 396 ERA, pitched in Wrigley Field. Pretty typical, actually, um, in this era. Bert Hooten and Rick Russell did not help things very much. The uh, And Larry Gurra certainly struggled and was thrust into a starting role he should not have had. He should have just stayed in the bullpen and developed. It would ultimately uh, mean that the Gurra will probably go to the Kansas City Royals in the American League where he will flourish. So, yeah, that's the unkind look at the Cubs. And let's take a look now at the card stack as we take out those 1970 cards away. They will, of course, all be in black. All right, Gura is one. And mostly hitters. Williams, Hickman, three. Banks, four. Sorrel, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. So we'll put those on the side now. And the first thing we do is we want to look and see who is coming back next year to help the Cubs recover from a couple lackluster seasons here. And interestingly, they got a loaded pitching staff, for better or for worse, and they're going to have to rebuild their offense because a lot of those veteran hitters are moving on. So it's only five hitters here. So the draft is going to be offense laden draft. You have Becker at second, Santo at third, just at the utility player, and a couple outfielders, Cardinal and Unser. So only five hitters, so they're going to have to figure out a brand new offense next year, or retooled offense and some keepers. Pitching staff, it's mostly all intact. They only have to add one pitcher. Maybe they'll make some trades, trade some guys away. They still have this glut of right-handed starters. They got Fergie, Hooten, and Russell. Three righty starters. Uh, these two can go on the rotation, not Russell cannot. They got two lefties in the bullpen. They got an entire bullpen here. Lefty, righty, lefty, righty. Well, and the problem is that they can't start either. No, no relief starters here. So without making any trades, the only thing they can do is add a left-handed starter to this rotation to replace Larry Gura. who would go in a three spot right here between these guys. Three starter. Or if he's really good, he'd be a two starter. But Fergie most likely would be the ace. So uh, we'll take a look at those 1970 uh, players and figure out who's going to be kept, waived, and retired. Okay, so we're going to take a look at the a high number of hitters, seven of them, seven hitters. And we're going to look at if uh, we are going to bring them back or retire them, waive them, etc. The first name, we will begin with a Hall of Famer. It came up alphabetically, but also came up. Yeah, the first and only Ernie Banks. Hall of Famer, his 1970 card. I mentioned in the last video of the Cubs, hit a home run in his final at-bat. Now, actually, Ernie did play 
some baseball in 1971 at age 40, but it's not worth using. His card does exist. I will predictably retire that card. And uh, when you look at the Cubs, we will retire Ernie Banks. So that's column three. We put a one there for a retired player. All right, next player is Jim Hickman. Hickman was an all-star in 1970. Oops, spell that wrong. Let's see. Um, he still should have some baseball left. He plays through 74. Outfielder, first and third baseman. Was a Met, Dodger, and Cub. Here's the All Star year he just had, and he's got some nice years coming up for the Cubs at ages 34 and 35. Still has an 800 OPS and 791 OPS. He's coming back. He doesn't go to the Cardinals until 74. It's only 60 at bats. So Hickman, right over here, will be kept. We'll give him uh, the $10,000 value in column one for a keeper. Next up, Randy Hundley. Hopefully he can still have a great throwing arm. That's what he was prized for during this little era of his. Randy Hundley, a 5'11", 170 pound catcher. Think about that father of Todd Huntley. Um, he was an all-star in 69, had a minus three yard with his 1970 card. 71, uh, probably got hurt or just called up briefly. Did it 333, but they didn't print his card for that short sample. He does have 72 and 73 years with the Cubs, then he's a twin in 74. 72 and 73, um, he's a Cub, plays two-thirds of a season. The batting average is not there. You have the idea he's probably a keeper if he's a good defensive catcher. So yeah, you could put this dude on waivers, but I mean, remember there's only 24 Major League Baseball teams and I have 32. So sometimes batting average doesn't tell the whole story. So for the moment, they're going to keep Randy Hundley. It's $10,000. Obviously, if they have an abundance of keepers, then the weakest of them would be put on waivers. So he might be moved there, depending on who else we find. We find Don Kessinger, and he should have uh, half a decade left with this squad. Don Kessinger, six-time All-Star and two-time Gold Glover. Yes, he's got his All-Star years of 71 and 72 coming up. You could say even better than the year he just had. Really doesn't matter too much with Kessinger. It really doesn't. He's a very consistent baseball player year in and year out. Um, so he's a keeper. And that's really good news that we've identified at least three thus far for the Cubs. Next up is Bill Sorrell. He was a free agent signee. I don't think he has an association with. We can already identify without looking at his career that he's over, he, he's uh, finished in 1970. But let's just take a look at his career since he is leading the league, find out a little bit more about him. He just uh, had a couple call-ups in 65 with the Phillies, 67 with the Giants, and then that expansion Kansas City team, the card we just used, uh, that was the card we just used. And so he kind of maxed out his potential, really. He will be retired. So that is the career Bill Sorrell. It's kind of a fun little bit to stratum and I can find out these extra guys you never know, knew anything about. Speaking of that, the next guy is the same thing. It's Bob Taylor. So that's a pretty common sounding name, but uh, how many Bob Taylors have there been in Major League history? Two guys in individual years, 70 and 45. Actually, let's have some fun and go back to 1945 and see what that Bob Taylor did. An unknown pitcher <laughs> with an unknown photograph. And, uh, yeah. He was a New York Cuban in 1945 in the Negro League. Okay. Interesting. So that's the earliest Bob Taylor in baseball history. Let's go back to the other one. This one, where we're, one we're using. The one of 1970. 
And here is the one of 1970 we used. This is a guy who pinched it and played left field, also caught. In that one year of 1970, positions, you see seven slash nine and the two at the end because he did catch a couple innings and that's why he was acquired. And he actually played a, a pretty interesting role in this past series. He had a big home run which hurt the Pirates in game one and the Pirates lost that game. So it did could very well impact the Pirates season that this guy, this extra, this extra player, Ultimately, didn't do much for the Cubs, but he may have hurt the Pirates' season. So there's that. And uh, he, of course, is retired. His 15 minutes of fame is over with. And now we have one more hitter, and this is going to be a fun one, folks. Speaking of Hall of Fame with uh, Ernie Banks, we have Billy Williams here. And... Uh, uh, Williams, you think 70 was his best year, and uh, he was a rookie of the year in 61. Uh, yeah, 70, 70 uh, he's got a 977 OPS, was second in MVP voting. But believe it or not, 72, a little higher batting average, slugging, and yeah, believe it or not. Five fewer homers than 70, but great news for the Cubs, that's a two-year contract too. He goes from the 322 card we just used, second MVP voting, to a 72 card where he's also seven, uh, second in MVP voting. So, great news for the Cubs. There are four keepers right there, which is easy. They wouldn't mind just renewing those guys and moving into the next season. And the eighth player, and this person must certainly go on waivers, and that is Larry Gura. Let's take a look at the career of Larry Gura beginning in 1970. So that rookie card of Gura we just used uh, was with the Cubs. And you can see that in 71 and 2 and 3, um, you know, he was used sparingly. Was a Yankee before coming to the Royals. So he prematurely was put into the Stratomatic League at age 22. And he was, clearly wasn't ready. So it could be that he just goes back into the minor leagues and might come back with a 73 or a 74 card. Could be with the Yankees or the Cubs. This is kind of a tricky situation the Cubs are in. This 74 cu uh, card is up for grabs if Stratomatic made it. Let's go check that out. We can check out to see if this card exists in 56 innings as a New York Yankee in 1974. To do that, we'll go to the Super D roster page, Gary Stratomatic Gamer Resource, and we'll look at the 74 original. And we want to see if Larry Gurra's card with the Yankees is printed. Go to the New York Yankee rosters and look for Gurra. We'll go down to extra players and look at that. So this is bad, really bad news that they did not make a Larry Gura card in 1974. They made Gonzalez, Pagan, Fred Staley, and M. Wallace. And looking at the, um, looking at the Yankees again, Dobson, Lyle, May, Metis, Stoudemire, Tidro, Upshaw. So no Larry Gura 74 card. So basically what that means is for next year in the 71 to 74 season, he doesn't really participate. So he is going to just go back to the minors, uh, which is another way of saying he's going to be retired. He's going to be retired from baseball. He's going to be out of baseball for a year or two. And then when he comes back out of this, he'll probably go to either the Yankees or the Royals. So that's that's bad news for the Cubs, is that they're not, they're not going to get anything out of that investment of, of uh, Larry Gurr. They're not going to get any positive result. They can't trade him. They, you can't put a player on waivers if they don't have a strat card in the following year. So they unfortunately have to waive him. They could have kept him and brought him into the league with a 74 card, but the 74 card does not exist. So the Cubs are kind of stuck. So that's where the Cubs are, and this offseason is not a big deal. We've identified four guys we want to keep.
And all you have to do is trade a couple of our retired guys to a team that has too many wavered guys. And that all only needs to be done before the draft, which begins next in the spring of next year. So that's our evaluation of the Chicago Cubs. Um, that's actually pretty good news in that Billy Williams, Don Kessinger, Jim Hickman, Randy Hundley, those are all household names. They get to come back with newer cards. All right, thanks for checking this out, and we'll see you next time.